Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Apex Investor, the daily update for Monday, April the 5th. We're looking at AMC and GME. First off, AMC was trading between 972 to 1125. I noticed pre-market, it did dip around $9, probably lower. Uh, please comment if you noticed the same thing. And then it skyrocketed back up to $11.25 and then uh, eventually just evened out at 1061. After hours, it is down 0.1%. Uh, uh, volume was about just over half of what the average is. So pretty good volume for a Monday. Uh, still sideways trading, again, being manipulated. GameStop, pretty much the same story. Uh, it was trading 164 to 195. Um, volume was only almost a fourth of what it usually is, so a lot lower than AMC today in terms of volume. No one is selling. Uh, we can see it did even out at 186, 95, and after hours, it's up 1.9%. Again, this is just the calm before the storm, people. Let's look at Reddit now. This from Wall Street Bets, GameStop announces preliminary sales results for the first nine weeks of fiscal 2021, reflecting an approximately 11% increase compared to the prior year period. So that's good news for GameStop. So according to the mainstream news, GameStop announcing the market equity offering program. So uh, the news has been reporting this as GameStop is offering, is giving a new offering of 3.5 million shares that will not exceed a billion dollars. I did the math here and the price per share is at least, I think it's 280 per share, but uh, they're spinning this news to make it sound negative. It's actually good. Um, basically what they're doing, they're lowering the maximum shares allowable to be sold from 6 million to 3.5 million. So all signs are pointing to a squeeze. Next post. Okay, so this post really brings to light the problem of technical analysis, not technical analysis altogether, but looking at things like the uh, you know cup and handle and Fibonacci retracement, Elliott wave theory, all these different uh, formulas that people use, all these different uh, methods. Personally, I just use the, you know, support and uh, resistance method where you look for true support. And I've already identified true support for uh, both GameStop and AMC. I've talked about it many, many times, but just for the sake of argument, I've already memorized it. The, the true support for AMC is between uh, four to $8. And the true resistance for AMC, it's hard to say, but it's looking like 14 to 20. I know it's quite, it's a wide range. And then for GME, the true support for GME is between $60 to uh, 120. It's pretty solid there. So you don't want to buy anything above 120. Uh, I mean, you, you can if you want, you can buy 160 if you like, but I'm just saying 120 is where all the buyers are showing up that's where when the price gets that low all these buyers show up in droves in the millions and millions uh and then in terms of resistance the true resistance is looking like uh 300 plus but just to be safe i'd say 350 uh to 480 but this is the hardest one to nail because when it comes to gme this short squeeze once it takes off it's going to be too late uh to determine where's true resistance because a short squeeze doesn't care about resistance. It just keeps going and going until well, until it hits its peak and wherever that is, wherever that winds up being is where it winds up being. So I can't predict that with 100% certainty, but it's looking like $1,000 might be it. Could be 10,000, but we'll see. Okay, normally I don't like talking about any other stock, but GameStop and AMC, but this one got my attention. This is Ride aka Lordstown Motors, it says uh, Lordstown Motors is going to change the automotive industry for decades to come. Literally an American underdog story. 
It's a damn shame that Hindenburg wrongfully attacked a company in small town Ohio that is bringing thousands of jobs to our country, to America. My advice to Hindenburg, never bet against America. And he rides with Lordstown and he's uh, predicting, forecasting that uh, ride, the stock ride will uh, will ride up to <laughs> triple. He's saying it will triple by September. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because Hindenburg, number one, and number two, uh, EV, and number three, it's American. And and I've also been following this company for quite a while. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, I do believe your money will be safer in either GameStop or in GME, or sorry, AMC or GME. So whether this takes off or not, it's really, uh, you know, that's your opinion. That's your bet to take. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor, nor am I an expert in finance. So take what I say with a grain of salt and whatever you do, whether you make a billion dollars or you lose it all, that's your responsibility and you're liable, not me. I'm only sharing my opinion. So we're going to look at AMC stock next, and we're going to go to a super secret Reddit, subreddit. It just was uh, established very recently. So we're going to look at AMC stock first and see what they got for us. Here we go. I got to mention this. Adam Aaron, the CEO of AMC, actually said this. Going back to Reddit, I'm more a fan of apes than I am of lizards for what it's worth. <laughs> that's hilarious. If that's true, wow. That is extremely bullish for this company that they have a CEO like that. So, so the hedge funds just lost a bet. <laughs> this is the bet they lost. They claim that streaming services such as Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus were going to kill theaters. And it kind of looked that way, to be honest. But look what happened. Warner Brothers is canceling its HBO Max deal, and they're going back to theaters in 2022 ending its HBO Max experiment. So that's an amazing, amazing move. Very big news for AMC. Here is a tweet from my favorite tweeter in recent uh, days, Joshua James. Short sellers have really got caught up in a mess. They have not had an opportunity to exit their short positions without losing the five, 500 plus million they are down. After the huge weekend, they're going to spend a pretty penny to keep short volume up against buying. And isn't that true? Very good post. Okay, I got to mention this. This is so wrong. They're attacking our boy Trey's Trades with the death threats? Like, why? I don't... This is so ridiculous. I mean, the kind of people out there right now, you know, we should say a prayer for Trey, not only for his health, but for the creator of earth and heaven to bring these people to shame, to turn all their plans around against them, whatever they've plotted against Trey, it'll fall back on their heads and that vengeance will be given and justice will be done to them. That's just not right. I do not like that, not one iota when Trey's been only a great person all this time. so Well, if you missed it, over the weekend, there was some fallout between the RGME mods and the community. And they're blaming, putting a lot of blame on uh, people like Ransole. So uh, it looks like this community, GME, has become very toxic. Uh, kind of like what happened to Wall Street Bets. It's just an empty shell of what it used to be. Um, so let me see if I'm going to scour GME and just see if there's anything at all to get. Looks like uh, our GME has imploded upon itself. I just saw this post and I'm not going to comment on it, but it it's really, uh, it's quite a shame. Um, with 245,000 members uh, and 14.3K online at the moment, if we look at Superstonk um, and compare those numbers and see, I mean, it's only 
been a few days that it's been up. If we see the numbers in terms of number online, members online will give us an idea of just how, wow, whoa, that was quick. Okay. <laughs> it's already <laughs> more than half of what GME was. And they have more online over there already. That's, that's incredible. So I know where I'm going to be going. Um, let me just see if there's any scraps at all at GME. Yeah, I'm not going, I'm not reading GME anymore. I'm just going to go to a super stock because look, people can mention WSB all they want. Even we know, even though we know it's compromised and it's been invaded by shills and hedge funds, but mentioning this other subreddit gets us deleted or banned. That's a bunch of, that's just humbug. That's a bunch of tomfoolery. It's a bunch of baloney. So uh, yeah. Your stock just crashed uh, to this subreddit. The stock is great, but the mods suck, okay? So <laughs> let's just put it that way. Making it official from this point forward, I am not going to GME anymore. So I'm just going to close the tab. I didn't read anything except for the fallout that happened. And to be honest, uh, when you look at this new subreddit, it's actually a very smart... I didn't join yet. Ooh. It's a very smart stratagem because hedge funds, obviously, they will look at GME. They'll do their Google searches, and it will not lead them to here. Well, most likely it won't, at least not for the first few days. Uh, so this is really good because it misleads them to just focus all their shilling tactics on GME and WSB, and that's great. It works out really great for us until they you know, get a clue. So in terms of all this fallout, all I'm going to say is uh, I noticed it when they started to censor Ward and Elite and Rensole and... That was only the tip of the iceberg of all the problems going on there. So I'm not going to comment on it furthermore uh, anymore. I'm going to say is we love the stock. We like the stock and let's just focus on GME and AMC. So that's about it. Uh, let's look at the news. I've got a total of six, possibly. This is good news here. I'm not going to read it, but just look at that. That's really good news. Um, you've been banned. Why? What did he say? You have been banned. You can still view and subscribe. You have been banned for spamming the sub. What What did he say? <laughs> I don't understand. Okay. And uh, this is a good post. Their goal is to never cover their short, but that would take the company going out of business or being delisted. That won't happen here. Best thing you can do is hold on to the stock and do business with GameStop. If everyone goes to their website and buys from them, that is going to help the company, which will help the stock, which will help everyone here. If you still believe in the reason you bought the stock and that hasn't changed, why sell? And that's a good question. Okay, next post. There's this post. I won't comment on it, but all I'll say, <laughs> okay, I'm going to comment. 1.3K comments, and let's look at how many are actually displayed. Less than 100, even less than 10, I would say. I don't know. It's it's very low number. So something's going on there, and I'm not going to comment on that because this is not a political uh, channel. This is a really good post and a prime example of why we've migrated to Super Stonk, a place for theoretical discussions about business and stocks, tinfoil hats, Tin foil hats and memes welcome. None of this is financial advice, and that's a great opening statement. This is what Wall Street bets should have been and should have stayed as. So this post, once again, the title is Why I Believe BlackRock Has Their Finger on the Button of Our Mother of All Short Squeezes. So from previous DD, We've discovered double D's. <laughs> we've discovered, we've discovered, sorry, can't speak English properly. Number one, BlackRock has the most shares in both AMC and GME for Market Beat. Number two, they have an incredible relationship with Adam Aaron, CEO of AMC. Three, they hold their highest level of cash in years. Incredible. And four, Ryan Cohen and Chewy received. $350 million in six rounds of funding, one of which was from BlackRock. Now, I want to dispel a myth. Elon Musk has spoken out against 
BlackRock, or Vanguard, I do not believe they are friendly whales on GME. Instead, I believe their CIO has a knack for playing both sides of the fence. Interesting. At first, after reading it, I was disillusioned, but then I thought more on it. Okay, let me just get to the point. Fast forward. Okay, so this guy is really theorizing something really wild. Uh, I'm not going to read it. I just find it a little ridiculous, but it could be true. He could be right. Uh, he's basically saying that BlackRock is playing both sides of the coin, that they bought, uh, they loaned out their uh, $9 million worth of shares to short sellers, but they've also uh, sold those and those borrowed shares and sold them to us. Um, I don't know. Again, that sounds so crazy. Remember, GameStop has a negative beta of 13 to 33. Uh, that's crazy. I don't even, I don't know. Wow. When they recall those shares, given my assumption that they will continue their both sides of the fence trading strategy, the borrowers have to repurchase them in the market. And that equals the mother of all short squeezes. Now, help me with this. If you're a hedge fund and you loaned out your shares, is there a timetable for when your shares are due back to you? Can you loan them out and collect interest every day? until they're repaid. So you're getting paid no matter, no matter what. Can you sell shares you've loaned out as the squeeze is happening, even though those shares have yet to be returned? I mean, i.e., do you miss the potential high money sale point per share during the squeeze? Therefore, I'll inject my new term, latent buying pressure, which only increases uh, how BlackRock to short sellers to retail to BlackRock Share recall to short seller repurchase mania equals the mother of all short squeezes. Simply put, if this is true, it's a big if, it's another explosive element to add to this powder keg of a stock. I'll correct one issue. Your shares belong to you. You can sell them at any time. Let your broker worry about the functionality of it all. If they didn't let you sell, they could end up with a liability problem and they will they will absolutely not let that happen. If they don't let you sell, we literally see the infinity squeeze before our eyes. How could they cover if no one can sell? There's zero reason to worry about your broker shutting off the sell button won't happen. Okay, next post. This post is saying basically the wolves are licking their chops to grab discount options contracts at auction following the perhaps inevitable liquidation of a major options clearing member. Citadel is a major options clearing member. People are getting ready to take their slice of the pie. And just for clarification's sake, he says here, these auctions are not for GameStop stock or any other stock for that matter. These are open auctions contracts and other companies that have yet to expire and will need to be sold to cover short positions. The OCC handles all options transactions while the NSCC handles securities, stocks, transactions. Okay, next post. I was going to say next donk. This is a potentially powder keg of a post. This is talking about the uh, our ability to vote our ability to vote. Okay, um, it's not loading. Here it is. The GameStop annual shareholder meeting. Uh, broker confirmed he was not going to have a vote at all. Uh, so this is important regarding your voting rights. So what do you have to do? If you are if you are on margin, not only are your shares able to be lent uh, without your consent, basically you gave them consent when you signed up for margin but that you can't recall your shares for the annual meeting, nor will you have the right to vote in the proxies. Also, people have been asking, I have a zero margin balance and extra cash sitting in the account. And this was still in the conversation. I knew about the lending of shares, but I didn't realize you can't even vote or recall your shares on margin. I'm sure most of you didn't realize that either. So I know some of you are annoyed I hadn't switched, but I have a feeling I'm not the only one. I know there was DD that told everyone to switch to cash, a cash account, but 
I know I didn't. I doubt I'm the only ape who didn't switch over to cash either. So from this conversation, if your shares are sold short on your margin account, this would force your broker to actually call back the shares lent short. If everyone was to call or message their brokers this week and to switch to cash only, if your shares were lent out, they would be recalled. You would also be allowed to vote in the upcoming proxy vote. At this point, if you're on margin, you don't have any rights as a GameStop shareholder, and your shares are definitely being used as ammo against any long shareholder of GME. I had no idea that I couldn't recall my own shares or, or even not have my vote counted on margin. So we've switched today. Uh, if anyone has made the switch from margin to cash before, please help the community by posting directions on how you did it and which broker. So uh, that's pretty good. Let me look at the comments and see what they have there. Yeah, so I read this guy's post, uh, why he got banned from RGME. Uh, it's a sad. Uh, didn't seem that he did anything wrong, from my impression here. But uh, someone mentioned that the that uh, subreddit has gone short on GME, and I'd have to agree with them. So I'm going to read this one post and end the video there. Actually, I'm going to mention before I forget, uh, I mentioned that uh, I have two massive videos coming out that you really want to watch. Uh, I actually have three now coming out. Um, I'll do the third one uh, most likely before next week. That's how important it is. It's very time sensitive. sensitive. So uh, without further ado, let's read this last post. Why are we trading sideways? Why is the borrow rate so low? When will we moon the theory of everything GME? So over the last few weeks, there have been some anomalies which have been bugging all of us. We've been trading sideways, the borrow rate is ridiculously low. The volume has seemingly dried up. The SEC seems to be sitting idle on their hands. We see the deep ITM calls and FTDs, so the DTC and OCC must also see these since their systems are clearing these trades. I think the answer is actually, actually really simple. There is no single long whale. It's an interesting theory. The DTCC, OCC, and SEC are collectively the long whale bending the rules to keep the price stable for now. On January 28th, they saw what happened and saw the systemic risk that GME shorts would pose. So they allowed Robinhood and Citadel to bend the rules. Otherwise, it would have impacted all the members of DTC and OCC. Response In response, the DTC issues this and OCC issued that, which firewall members from defaulting members and, and allow orderly liquidation of defaulting members. So why we're trading sideways? Contrary to popular conjecture that Citadel is using a short ladder to suppress the price, I believe these members who are not exposed to GME shorts are working together to suppress the price within a narrow range. The reason is not because of max pain. The reason is to wait for the firewalls to be in place. Price volatility can easily cause this to launch before the members are ready. They know that retail is largely tapped out, lack of overvolume, unless sudden volatility draws in more retail buyers that will move the price faster than they can control. So who is suppressing the price? The non-defaulting members of the DTC and OCC collectively to protect their assets from defaulting members. The shorts are buying the deep in the money calls to carry their FTDs, fail, failure to deliver. Non-defaulting members are laddering up and down to maintain the price stasis. I like that word stasis. <laughs> it's like a deep dead space term, the something stasis field. Where is the borrow rate so low? DC, DTC and OCC, I'm just not even going to say that anymore. These members are collaborating with the SEC's approval to suppress the borrow rate to keep the current price stasis. The price stasis is important to hold the line until 
these things are in place, which establish liquidation and order of payment. Everyone has agreed to this, so they can protect non-defaulting members from the GME short blast. Why is there no volume? Retail is out of the picture at this point. Retail has already put a lot of their liquid capital into GME, and the price stasis and new cycle has suppressed new retail from jumping in. The mainstream media is not being manipulated by Citadel or GME shorts. They are being manipulated by these letters here, alphabet soup, in order to prevent retail from creating volatility. Why haven't institutions bought like mad? They are all part of these. So they have agreed to hold the current price stasis until they can be protected from the GME short fallout. Why is the SEC sitting by? Well, they know what's going on. And these alphabet soup, they clear every transaction on the market. They are smarter than us. If we can figure out what's going on with the deep in the money calls and so on, uh, and they sure as hell know what's going on. The SEC is allowing these two to firewall non-defaulting members from the defaulting GME shorts. Everyone has agreed that the GME shorts are going to default. How can no one see what GME shorts are doing? They can. They can see it. In fact, they are probably working with the shorts to maintain this price stasis with the tacit understanding that they will be wiped out in a default. But in order to protect the DTC and OCC, they will work together in exchange for perhaps leniency or more likely total lack of punishment and perhaps a legal shield from the DOJ in exchange. So the launch is still on. It is all but a given. Why else would they react so quickly with these measures? Why define the procedure for recovery and wind down and liquidation of a defaulting member. So when is the moon? These were filed and it has a 60 day window from filing in which it can be put into effect if there's no objection any time within that 60 day window. However, it can be extended another 60 days if they have any objections or further comments. This was filed on March 31st. It has a 45 day window, which can be put into effect if there's no objection. However, it can also be extended 90 days, another 90 days, if they have objections or further comments. My take is that these are calendar days because this, the, I'll call it the SEC. The SEC have a very specific definition for business days and would use that term explicitly. 60 days from February 23rd would, would be April 24th. We could see things start to move between now and then, if these are put into effect. Won't Citadel and GameStop shorts just keep kicking the can? They won't be able to. The shorts are not suppressing the price. He's saying that these two, the dick, they call the dick and the ock, the DNO, the DNO are collaborating to suppress the price right now. Once they are protected, the borrow rates will go up, margin calls, will trigger, and the squeeze is on. Oh, they want to protect themselves first. Okay. Can't the D and the O keep doing this forever? The D and O members likely want to resolve this as much as we do. Everyone knows the GME shorts are going to default. That's why these were created, these measures. They have already accepted these defaults as a result of the impending scramble to cover but they are bending the rules at the moment to set up their firewalls. What can the shorts do? They can delay these measures. Why would they do this? To secure their assets. I would offer that the Citadel hiring of Heath Tabert as the vehicle by which they will delay. His job is to get the SEC to delay enactment or negotiate the wind down as favorably as possible for Citadel shareholders and leadership. I'll just call him Sit from now on. It rhymes with Zip. <laughs> Something that needs to be popped, right? The proposed change may be implemented. Okay, all that, blah, blah, blah. 60 days again, 45 days. My sense is that it is more likely that shorts are collaborating with the DO and the SEC to avoid punishment. 
the DO and SEC are allowing them to play their FTD game to keep the price stable. Why don't they just make these measures effective? Well, the DNO are self-regulatory organizations. Read those images above carefully. The DNO make their own rules. They approve it on their own schedule. They only need to show the SEC and let SEC comment or request further information. The SEC does not approve the rules. They can only not object and let the organizations implement their own rules. The organizations themselves make these measures effective when they are ready. Does this change my strategy? It's a great question. No, buy and hold shares. What you can take away from this is that we will not see significant price movement up or down for the foreseeable future until these measures are in place. You're literally fighting against all of Wall Street, even the GME long institutions like BlackRock, for instance. There's literally no point buying deep out of the money options until there is a whiff of these measures getting close to implementation. 004 and 801. We will keep trading sideways. Borrow rate will be inexplicably low. Volume will be absent, etc. until the DNO members are protected and they let off the brakes. Sit and shorts are not and have not been in control. The DNO and all non-defaulting members have been prepping for the default of shorts. If you believe BlackRock is working with Ryan Cohen on this, they have agreed they are, they are going to wait to announce the CEO change, not because they are waiting for Sherman, but because they are holding price stasis until they are protected. So this is a great theory, actually. Uh, actually makes sense. Um, I wouldn't rule it out, but I will not confirm this is true either. So it's just a good idea to stay open to these different possibilities. So you know what? <sighs> That's why you buy the dip. And heck, you want to sell the sell the news and sell it at 300? It's up to you. You know, uh, it's a risky play, but at the same time, if this keeps going on and on for years, that might be the only money you'll make is, you know, 300, 350, and you buy it at 120 and sell it again at 400 or 300. And that's not a bad plan. So uh, I, don't, I don't know. We'll see. Because when you think about it, the volume drives price. So if everybody decides to sell their GameStop and AMC once it hits 300, 400, and then they decide, hey, let's buy it up once it dips, that volume is going to bring it even higher than before. So uh, I don't know. We'll see where it goes from here. But I'm loving this new subreddit. I'm going to call my video, uh, <laughs> I might just call it Super Stonk. I won't even call it GME anymore. I might just call it Super Stonk. Yeah. So thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you haven't, please give it a thumbs up. Please give this video a thumbs up. Give it a like. Smash the subscribe button and ring the ding. Ring a ding ding the notification bell so that others who are being discouraged from buying GME and AMC stock because of the MSM will see this video and they will be encouraged by this true news coming out, this real news that is going on behind the scenes where we have all the DD, all the stats, all this uh, research being done. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of theory, but there's a lot of uh, evidence as well. So thank you very much. Once again, we'll catch you tomorrow for a daily update. And this is Apex Investor signing out. Good night.